Hey guys, I'm so happy that you love the last Q&A videos I did. Thank you so much for all of your questions and your comments. And a lot of you have requested another series of Q&A videos. So that's what I'm doing today. I haven't heard your questions yet. Uh, my producer, Laura, will be off camera asking me them. So I look forward to hearing them. And this will be cut up into a bunch of different videos like last time. And I look forward to hearing your comments, okay? Oh man, that, see that, it's funny because like, I've been so fortunate to be a part of like something like 70s, which went for eight years and now Orange, which, you know, went for seven. And they're such huge parts of my life. 70s is different in that, like, I don't miss, like I'll miss Orange in a different way because I, I, I have been on Orange like as an adult woman, you know? The people I grew up with on this show, like when you're on a show for this long, it definitely, your cast becomes like your family. Um, so, but we all are, we're all really close though from that show, which is so cool, but I don't like miss, I'm nostalgic for it. Like I was talking to Topher the other day and he was mentioning, you know, the neighborhood we used to shoot in and he was going, driving through the neighborhood. We shot at this place called CBS Radford in, in Studio City, California. And he happened to be in Studio City and he hit me up and he's just like, I am so nostalgic for our show right now. If I ever hear Todd Rundgren, I would start crying right away. Because Hello, It's Me, that song you sang was like the pinnacle of our experience, like the pilot and everything when we were all, I had no idea what we were doing. And that song just has so much weight connected to it. And I, it brings me right back to shooting the pilot of 70 show. And if that song, if I hear that song, I'll usually just kind of start crying <laughs> because of so much incredible emotion around it and nostalgia. So we all appreciate that. But also we've all gone on to do wonderful things and we all stay in touch and which is rare, you know, but, but we do. And it's, it's great. Even if I put something on social media, like Wilmer will, you know, I posted something about VidCon and, and, you know, Wilmer was like, can I come meet you? You know what I mean? Like just, we just send each other jokes and whatever via social media or, you know, just to each other. We also have a thread with all of us on there and we'll just completely like, you know, make fun of each other and do fun things, or we just like share things. Like it's great. I'm going to miss my boots on the ground, you know, being with working with these women. And it is, you know, I've talked about it before, but being on a show that's so special, that's so, you know, we take on such important, amazing issues. And it's also so funny and dramatic. And it walks this beautiful line. There has never been a show like it. And there won't be another show like it again. There'll be other shows that have things similar to it and try to do what we did. But this show really is different. Um, and I love that. And I'm so fortunate to be a part of it. I'm going to miss that. It was very short lived, but it was the first time I played a mom. Like I played, um, a woman named Hannah Daniels who had a 10 year old son and I got to play a young mom on it. And it was just, it was great. I loved that role. That whole show was really, really beautiful. I also learned a lot about directing television because that, you know, 70s show was a half hour comedy multi-camera. So October Road was an hour long drama. So I learned a lot about directing hour longs, shadowing our main director, Gary Fleeter. Um, I learned a lot from him. I went to the editing room with him. He would like show me his storyboards and I learned a lot from him. So that was really great to kind of have a different viewpoint, especially of directing um, on a show like that. That was cool. I didn't used to because it's hard for me to watch things that I'm in. And I know a lot of actors say that, but it's actually true. Like I get to like critique of like, oh, I could have done that. Or, you know, a lot of times as an actor, you, you work and then later, and you do different options. You do many different takes, you do many different options. And I like to try a bunch of different things. And then when you see something, you're like, that's what they chose. Why did they? So I've learned now, if you don't want it to end up on camera, don't do it. As a director, I have to watch it because we get new scripts every episode, obviously. And so many things happen and there's so many people on our cast. So as a director, I will rewatch the whole thing before my episode, um, just to remind myself of what's going on with all the characters. 
And it's, you know, so that's, that's something that I do. And that, because I'm watching it as a director, I don't watch myself as an actor. So it's like a different hat. So that is much more comfortable for me. I've gone into auditions where like I look down and my shirt is moving because of my heartbeat, because I'm, my heart is beating so hard. But the first audition, oh man, I can totally relate. And I remember, so one thing that I would say is embrace what you're going to do with that role and that those sides that you have in front of you, because whatever you do with that is going to be different than anybody else in that room, in the waiting room. So it's just embracing. And it took me a really long time to, to realize that you go into an audition and there's 20 other people who are dressed similarly to you. And some of them might even, you know, look a little bit like you. And it's a little bit like, this is really weird, but just know none of them are going to do the scene in the audition scene or scenes like you are. And knowing that and owning that is something that really, really helped me as a, as an, as an actor when I was, you know, first kind of coming up. And the other thing too, is that, you know, when you finally are, you know, working as an actor, it's, it's amazing. I mean, when you're, when you finally like, wow, I'm actually like able to pay my bills and survive as an actor. And this is the art that I want to do. And it's, you know, it's amazing. So when you go into these auditions, one of the things that I also did was I was like, I get to go in and for 10 minutes, do what I love. I get to go in and show these people, I get to go in and act for 10 minutes and like play this role and, and do this craft that I love so much. So when I changed my viewpoint in terms of like, this is fun for me, I want to, I can't wait to get in there and show them what I did with this material. That also really helped me too. So embrace your individuality and change your viewpoint of like, instead of I'm scared to go in there or what are they going to think more like, I cannot wait to show them what I did with this. And those are two things that really helped me. She's not going to take anyone's advice. <laughs> Alex is not going to take advice, trust. The advice I would give to Donna is to get out of this town and go and experience your life and broaden your horizons and see the world. That's what I would tell Donna. And she probably did do that. Thank you guys so much for all of your questions. We're going to cut this up in a few different videos. So subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you can know when we post a new one. Thanks so much for watching and see you guys next time.